So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you could please just introduce yourself to everyone, tell us uh, a little bit about your job title, what agency you're affiliated with, um, if you've had any experience working with the CESU or LTER networks, and just overall how long you've been working for a federal agency. Great. Thanks, Paige. And hello, everybody. My name is Allison Roy. I am a research fish biologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, and I'm also a unit leader for the Massachusetts Cooperative Fish and Wildlife Research Unit. So this is a position where I work closely with federal and state fish and wildlife agencies to provide technical assistance and address their research questions, mostly working with graduate students. So I'm based at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, uh, where I'm a research associate professor as well. Um, and I've been in the co-op unit for 12 years now, first as an assistant unit leader of fisheries. And then um, since 2020, I've been the unit leader. Oh, that's cool. It's cool to hear uh, your involvement at the university as well as um with the federal agency. So uh, I asked you to prep some questions about the theme career preparation. And so how did you get your job and what experiences led to this position? Great, thanks. So, so I actually went straight from undergrad to grad school and finished all my degrees before working in the field, which I tell my students now that I don't recommend. Um, but because of that, um, my kind of positions and experiences that led me to this were after grad school. So after grad school, I did a postdoc with the um, Environmental Protection Agency for five years. Um, and then I was an assistant professor at a teaching focused university for two and a half years before moving to the co-op units in 2012. Um, and, and thinking back, I think a few factors probably um, helped me land the co-op unit position. I think for sure having that five years as a federal postdoc probably demonstrated that, you know, I had experience working in a federal agency. I understood federal agencies and it gave me a different status in applicant pools. And I think that is actually probably really important. Um, second, I think my research experiences were on topics that were of interest to the cooperators who were hiring me. So that was probably valuable. And, and finally, while I don't think it was essential for my job, um, having teaching experience was probably a plus. Um, so my research program must, um, address sort of like the changing needs of cooperators. And I think um, showing flexibility in my willingness to conduct research on a wide variety of topics was probably pretty important. Um, I, I think, you know, so often people think they are hired for very specific skills, but um, having been on the other side of hiring now, I've learned that employers are more often looking for good colleagues who have really strong interpersonal skills, who can adapt and grow in a position because you don't really know where the future needs will be in that job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. Thank you. And so kind of uh, looking back, what would you have done uh, to prepare better for your career? So the funny thing about this question is that this wasn't the career that I um, was seeking when I was in grad school. All through grad school, I thought I wanted to teach. And so it wasn't until I was away from teaching uh, or away from research um, that I realized how much I enjoy research and in particular the mentoring side more than the teaching side. And, and so as such, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't really focused in grad school on gaining skills for things like running a research lab or writing proposals, developing budgets, um, supervising and hiring mm -hmm. students, um, administering budgets, all those sorts of things. So I have no formal training um, doing any of that or working with partners to try to like co-develop projects and figure out their research needs. Um, but I think... Um, you know, you can learn a lot on the job um, and from support networks. And so as much as it's, this is all about, you know, what you can do to prepare for a future career, I, I do want to emphasize that, you know, you can learn on the job. And so, you know, in all of the positions I've had, I've requested mentors and met with them regularly and asked them lots of questions. So I think that's important. Um, early on, I put together a group of early career friends and colleagues in different positions around the U.S. and we met monthly and we 
talked about issues that we were facing and we troubleshoot, did troubleshooting around them. And that was really fun. Um, you know, I regularly attend trainings in this current job and, and I participate in panels like this. And I, I learn too, when I'm participating in these kind of panels. So um, that's really fun. Um, I want to share that recently I've um, developed a new um, leadership training program for the Society for Freshwater Science. And as part of that, the, the team of us that have developed this have been organizing webinars on the hidden curriculums of jobs in our field. So I get to to attend these webinars too yeah and um learn alongside with that so um yeah i think um you know while i wish i had some experiences like this earlier in my career and i absolutely encourage you all to you know seek out opportunities to develop these softer skills that are important for for this job um it's important i think to remember that no one knows how to do their job when they first start and there's always going to be on the job opportunities for for learning and improving Awesome. Thanks. That's such great advice. 